hello welcome back um, and this is day two of my 30 days of minecraft builds mobs look at that frog go <laughs> today's a little bit different because we're going to be doing the bee high and not just the bee so let's take a look at what we're going to be building today don't ignore that one over there. That's what I use to count the blocks uh, because counting by hand is ridiculous and I realize there are commands that we can use, so that's what that's for. Uh, makes for not so pretty intro. How about that? That's a little better. <laughs> um, yeah, we are building... Let's see if I can get it. Uh, okay. We are building this beehive we are building a dripping beehive and let's take yeah let's go ahead and um, take a look at the blocks that you are going to need you are going to need we've got 201 brown concrete 74 brown wool 53 white terracotta 8 yellow concrete powder 54 brown mushroom blocks, 23 light gray terracotta, 235 yellow concrete, 2 white concrete, 168 stripped jungle wood, 140 yellow terracotta, 3 orange concrete powder, 1 brown concrete powder, 5 brown terracotta, 187 yellow wool and 60 brown carpets and I will put all of this down in the description below so that it's easy for you um, if this is too hard to get it all down so here is a look at the prototype build that I did and then that over there is the build that I did um, for the actual tutorial. So let's go ahead and jump into that tutorial. We are starting right on off with that um, brown concrete and some brown wool. I still don't think I want to walk you guys through each block individually for these. I feel like it's a little um, excessive to sell you each block. If you feel like that would be a lot more helpful, let me know and we can definitely look at maybe redoing that. Not redoing, but from here on out, um, saying like, oh, this is six of this or whatever, if that's more helpful. I did not put down a blueprint for this one. It is a 16 by 16 square, so if you would like a blueprint and you want to lay that down to um, do better, that would be fine. Um, honestly, I'd probably recommend it because the very first, the prototype build, I missed an entire row and I made it all the way to the end and realized it was not squaring off correctly on the top and that's when I realized I had to go back and take out an entire row so I could bump it out and add an extra row and it was super frustrating for me and so ever like my editing of this video it was a five hour video because I, I noticed I went back and I counted my squares over and over and over again like I kept making sure and second guessing I'm like it's not like my square changed so I don't know why I thought I would keep counting but I did so there's like I, I cut uh, a five hour video down into this is <laughs> what I did it was crazy and it was unnecessary and I hope it does not take you that long to do this as well um, I don't think I showed a aerial view of the first layer. I think I might have missed showing that or I missed seeing it while I was chatting away. Um, I did try to show an aerial view of the layer as much as possible. Um, I, when I go back to edit this, if I see I have it, I'll put a little screenshot in um, in like one of the corners to to show you and just in case I missed it. I don't I'm feeling flustered already. I did figure out the day and night cycles and I did turn off the weather so that's something we're not having to deal with which is amazing. 
and that was kind of a big pain in the butt to deal with uh, in the very first video. So I'm definitely learning. Here is your aerial view of the second layer. Something I know is going to be difficult for our survival players to get a hold of is the brown mushroom block. Um, I really can't give you a good alternative to that. These are just the colors that work. Um, I actually have now built this three, fully three times. The first time I built it, I used a lot of oranges to try and get this like the brown tones in there without getting browns because I was thinking like, um, I don't know, I kind of thought I was seeing more orange tones and less brown and I was also thinking orange wool is a lot easier to get a hold of than the brown mushroom block, but um, it just looked awful. <laughs> it looked terrible that way, so we did have to change it and I did have to move everything over and do a um, brown mushroom mint block instead, so I'm sorry that it's going to be a very difficult block for you to get a hold of, but it looks the best, it really does. And this is your layer three. If you need to pause it so that you can get all those placed right, go for it. This is the only areas that I ended up using any kind of orange in is the two places where we would see honey because we just needed a little bit of a darker tone. But um, the orange concrete powder is the best because it's not quite so solid orange, so it doesn't seem like it's misplaced and and the white flecks in it kind of help too like with the shininess of the honey and I am still going back and forth looking back and forth but not I haven't gotten out of that I think I have figured out how not to do that um, in the third video and and maybe that way I don't have to edit as much either and these videos can you know not take me an entire day to edit alone <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm learning quite a bit with this series, and I hope you guys are too, and I hope you can, you're can, you enjoying it overall. And this is your layer 4 aerial view. So something I will mention with the stripped jumbo wood, I used the like the actual wood block where it's like compressed wood and there's no log circle, like some mineral looking log circle. You don't have to do that because the in most instances at least two of the sides of the block are hidden. You can probably just get away with using a regular log block if that's easier. And you, I mean, it uses less resources to do it that way. So if you're playing in survival and, and you don't want to have to compress so many pieces of the wood, you can totally use the jungle log instead of the jungle wood. And here is your fourth layer. The browns got to be my favorite layers because for a lot of it you just do brown all the way around and it looks like actually this layer, the sixth layer, is the jungle wood all the way around. Super super simple. I like I appreciated those layers where it looked like it was the same color all the way through, all the pixels all the way through. Um, you will see, or you might have seen, there was a little actual beehive sitting out in front of my little prototype. And I like, would get down really close and like look at it and try to say like, okay, which one is this? This was before I realized I probably should just pull up pictures. Now looking at pictures is a lot easier than just looking at the item in Minecraft because on pictures I can like zoom in and I can get a better look at the pixels. Um, I mean it's been a whole learning process, it's been really great because I've, I've learned different ways to look at stuff in a teaching manner. Like, 
it doesn't make sense to just sit here and look at the little itty bitty tiny beehive in game look at a picture off of like the minecraft wiki instead and get a better look at it so i i definitely used that a lot more in our next build uh, instead of because our next build is a moving mob um like the frog and I, there was no way like there's no way that it was going to sit still enough for me to even study it it was not going to happen and then the mob on day four is actually a hostile mob and I'm in a peaceful world and so every time I even tried to spawn one in just to like get a quick look at something and it disappears immediately so I can't even spawn in the like hostile mobs at all and that is your next level I don't remember what level that is six maybe <laughs> I think that might have been six but yeah, so I was like, oh, I can't even, can't even spawn in number four to like look at. I, I have to find a picture. And so that's, I'm getting better. I am, I'm getting better at simplifying how I do this so that I can create um, what I want to create in this time frame. And here is your layer seven. And speaking of like creating within a time frame, you'll see that I have like these box outlines uh, outside of all of my builds. This is like my own constraints, my own parameters. I'm trying not to go outside of these boxes because I feel like some of these um, ideas and mobs could get huge to get all of the detail you really want in them. So I'm trying to constrain myself to these boxes so that I don't overwhelm myself and I don't spend like one day working on like an 18 hour build and then I have to figure out how in the world am I going to edit that and, and get it down to a, a you know a decent chunk just for viewing on YouTube so that is my goal with these I will tell you day four I had to step outside of the boundaries because the mob's tail just does not fit in the boundaries it's so frustrating but my goal overall is to try to stick to that constraint there and here's where I made a little bit of a mistake and so I went ahead and left that in there so you can see um, what fixes that I made. I'm not sure if I showed, oof, that was a lot of like weirdness there, but I'm not sure if I showed you the aerial view of that brown layer. Again, I was talking. I. I have found a different way to do this so that I am talking as I'm placing for video three so that hopefully it's not quite so choppy. <laughs> I'm, I'm making improvements, friends. I am. But if I missed out on showing the aerial view of um, that brown layer, I'll make sure that there is a screenshot somewhere in here so that you can see it. At least pause and see it in a corner somewhere. <laughs> Did I do it again? I didn't show an aerial view again? Oh heck. I'm sorry friends. I will definitely make sure there is an aerial view posted.
I'm not sure what happened here if I just like during build process forgot that I wanted to show aerial views. Um, as I'm watching this for commentary's sake, I've decided I will probably just include an aerial view picture in the corner for every layer just to make things simpler for you and for me so I don't have to figure out which layers I missed and which ones I didn't. So hopefully you have seen aerial view photos popping up. Um, since uh, at the beginning at this point. <laughs> you've hung out this long, if you could do me a huge favor and subscribe and like the video, I would super appreciate it. Um, it really does help the more likes and the more subscriptions I get. Um, yeah, and then also if you have a mob you would like to see built, let me know in the comments. Um, maybe it's already on my list for the next 30 days, but maybe it's not and I can make sure we work it in sometime after this 30 days. Here we go, I got back to showing aerial views, oh my gosh. So this is one of the places where um, the creators can kind of play with pixel colors in a way that we can't. And if you look at the beehive, the top of the beehive has brown, but those blocks are actually yellow on the sides. So in order to combat that, I decided that covering it with the brown carpet was the best way to get the same effect similar to what we're going to do um, in our next video. I was thinking, oh, we've already discussed this, but we haven't. We discussed it on stream. We have not discussed it here. Um, there is, I kind of have a complaint that, you know, we're not, we're held to different constraints, right? We can't have two-toned blocks the way they can, so sometimes you have to finagle things, and this is one of the spaces where we kind of have to finagle it. It works out okay, though. It's not um, too big of a deal to add the brown carpet. And one thing I did do, um, you'll see it when I do the walkthrough of the builds and what I put inside them. Um, in order to add light to one of the, the uh, beehives, 
I took out a row of the yellow wool, put the lights in there, and then on the top I covered it with the yellow carpet. So it still looks the same, but there's lighting built into the roof. So that is an idea. If you find it gets really dark, it will. It gets very dark, it is going to spawn in bats if you don't put in some torches or some kind of light as you go. Uh, I learned that the hard way and <laughs> to deal with bats. Um, and so if you want to just put in some of the blocks that are light blocks like the glowstone or the like the prisoning lanterns um, any of those blocks like that you, then you just cover the top of it with a yellow carpet it's really convenient it makes it blend nicely And there is the aerial view of the top so far. I definitely think if you're going to be building any major, any amount of any amount, any amount of these builds in survival mode, you probably should have a wool farm. Um, if you don't know how to make a wool farm, let me know, and we can definitely put that in our build um, when we do sheep. <laughs> that could be part of the inside of one of the um, the like either the prototype or the tutorial build. But uh, I would definitely recommend having a wool farm. It would make a huge difference in all of these builds because wool, concrete, and terracotta are our main building supplies. Here's another aerial view. They're our main building supplies in all of this because of their versatility and like colorability. <laughs> and we just don't have those in some of the other blocks. <laughs> we only missed half the build without those, but okay. So this row here is actually the row that I, this entire square here, is the square that I took out to put in um, glow stones, because this entire row square is wool and yellow wool. So then it was really easy just to take all of those out, put lights in, and cover it with the wool carpet if that is something you're wanting to do. And you can do it with the brown too. I was just trying to create a very symmetrical shape um, with the lights in on the inside. 
and an aerial view. So this step right here, where it is a square, this is where I realized my prototype was wrong. <laughs> and this is when I realized I had to take apart one whole wall because I was not getting a square center. Okay, and that is it. That is how you build the beehive. So if that is all you're interested in, thank you for hanging out. I appreciate it so much. If you would like to see how I fill these two beehives, we didn't fill that one. That one, I literally just did that one for the count um, using the clone command so that I could count how many blocks were in this. So there should be no errors in block count this time. Um, but yeah, so if you are wanting to see what's inside these builds, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we're gonna look down so you guys don't see anything else, hopefully, that is going on. I don't really know why I keep insisting on putting the door- Ooh, you saw that. <laughs> keep insisting on putting the door in the back. I guess it kind of is necessary um, to, to not mess up the front there, but I keep- giving you guys sneak peeks of what's coming. <laughs> okay, so I decided to turn this one into an actual bee habitat, and I tried to show how, if you wanted to make this a farm, how that would look. Um, you would probably have, I don't have it in here, but you would probably have like a rail system underneath this first layer um, to collect everything that comes out whenever, um, the dispenser is activated. I did not go to the full trouble of doing all of that in here. I just wanted to show how this could be a fully automated farm and still look really cute. And so we went ahead and filled in with um, some of the, the honey blocks and the honeycomb there just to kind of make this all look like it is just a giant hive. And there are the glow stones that I was telling you that I installed and then covered up with carpet. Um, yeah, so this is this one. And then there's one of our escapee frogs right there. <laughs> um, this is the... That's the color palette. I actually posted this color palette on my Instagram and I just did it in a grayscale so you really didn't know what was coming and what, you know, what I was working on, but kind of, if you know your blocks really well, you kind of had a general idea of where I might have been going. So if you're not following my Instagram, you should go check it out and I will leave that in the link down below. But so this is the fully decorated version. I just sprouted in a ton of trees. Um, the birch tree, an idea here is to get a really tall birch tree, you just put in another piece of dirt down there and grow another tree. And then you can start getting some of the taller trees there. We're just gonna look down because this is mostly just um, wooded area back here. Okay, we should be good, yeah. So here I, I went ahead and did like a little path to this door and this one is a house. So we've got like a little sitting area with the new mud block there and you put in some um, banners to make it look like there's some, some pillows on it and then our little bar that really shouldn't be there. I don't think it even needs to be here. No, I'm not sure why it was still there. Um, but a little bar for an eat-in kitchen. We've got just a little bit of like a like a china hutch type feel there. The grandfather clock, the TV, and here is the big table and our stove, our fridge, kitchen obviously. Um, lots of storage in here. And then up these stairs, this is into the bedroom. So this is an idea on these bigger builds. You can always cover up when you've got like crazy wall stuff going on. You can always just uh, make your walls too thick and, and then you end up with some solid walls that don't look quite so crazy. Um, it's just an idea for houses like this that are super big and maybe have like a lot of stuff going on in the walls. Um, here is the bed, a little bit of storage there, 
a little bit of a coffee table in the bedroom and you know just a, a shelf a fancy shelf and then we'll go upstairs one more time and this is I envision this is like their kind of secret library you know maybe they're a little bit kooky and they're doing a lot of stuff up here so they've got a little bit of an experimenting area a little bit of a study space there their enchantment area here and then again like a little little nook to study in and if you haven't seen this before to do the empty bookshelves here you just do a loom you do the back side of a loom and it gives a really good illusion of like a empty bookshelf um, so yeah this is and then I also did a double thick wall here so you don't see the honeycomb on the inside um, this one I went a little bit fancy with that's for sure it's a very fancy um, a very fancy library up here and that's gonna be everything that is the inside of these two um, just to give you some ideas of things that you can do inside of this kind of a build and I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and let me know if uh, there's anything that I can do better that may would make it easier for you uh, yeah I hope you guys have a great day and I will chat with you all soon bye